Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and welcome to this series of short podcasts by Greenhouse Sensation that will focus on some exciting updates from our greenhouse. We will take a deep dive into some of the amazing growing techniques we undertake and some unique variety of plants we grow, such as tomatoes, chilies, sweet peppers, as well as the odd tropical like bananas and ginger. To be sure you don't miss out, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and share this video so that your fellow growers can also tune in. With that said, let's get into today's episode. Paul, thanks for joining us again today for episode 3 of the Greenhouse Sensation podcast. Hello. So, in this episode we're going to be talking a little bit about blossom end rot. It's disappointing to see a tomato in mid-growth with a bruised looking splotch on the bottom end of the fruit. This blossom end rot in tomatoes is a common problem for gardeners. Its cause lies in the plant's inability to absorb enough calcium to reach the fruit. So Paul, just a few quick questions. How do you spot blossom end rot in tomatoes? Well, like you just referred to, you start off with a brownish spot on the bottom of the fruit, which uh, only develops and uh, spreads all the way around the fruit, sometimes uh, affecting up to half the fruit. Uh, so yeah, big brown spot. Yeah. Okay, and what conditions are these blossom end rot problems most likely to happen in? Uh, it can be caused by a number of stressed conditions, but the most common one is drought stress. So when you get really, really hot weather, and um, the plants, um, they take up they take up water faster than they can take up nutrients, so they can't translocate the calcium around the plant effectively enough. So when it's very hot, some varieties are quite susceptible to blossom end rot. So how would you recommend resolving these problems when customers you know, identify blossom end rot on their tomatoes? Well, first of all, it's best to prevent in the first place. Mm. So there's a couple of things you can do. If you use um, one of our hydroponic planters, such as a Vivi Grow or a, or a Quag Grow, then... The, the plants always have access to water and nutrients, so it's less likely to happen in the first place. It can still happen if temperatures are very, very hot. Uh, good ventilation in your greenhouse is quite important. Um, there are certain varieties are less susceptible as well, so uh, cherry tomatoes are generally much less affected by blossom end rot, whereas plum tomatoes seem to be more affected yeah, I think prevention is often the best cure for blossom, blossom end rot, as you say, and you know, regular and even watering, especially during the fruit set, is, is the best way to avoid getting blossom end rot in the first place and a, a good way to restore the health in plants that have suffered from drought. But as you just picked on there, yeah, self-watering planters like our quad grow or our duo grow planters can provide your thirsty tomatoes with up to 14 days of watering and and will take up water as and when they need it thanks to the uh, smart reservoir and the feeder mat system and as well as that the soil is never too dry or waterlogged and roots also have better access to oxygen which fuels faster growth and and also uh, an automated watering system such as our click and drips is also perfect for giving regular and even watering to tomatoes in grow bags raised beds borders and vegetable plots as well. Um, so any listeners who have been victim to blossom end rot, we highly suggest that you check these products out. Well, there's a couple of other things you can also do. Go on then, enlighten us. Well, if you have got blossom end rot, a foliar feed can, can help, okay. um, as can mulching the surface of your compost uh, to reduce evaporation. So it's, it's that hot, dry situation at the top of the... The, the root zone that can uh, that can lead to problems as well, so mulching always helps. Mulching, that's a good tip. That's very useful, Paul. But uh, yeah, we'll keep it short and sweet for, for this episode, Paul, but thanks again for your time, and uh, we'll speak to you again in a future episode. Thank you, everyone, for listening to episode three of the Greenhouse Sensation podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a comment below. And if you'd like us to answer any questions you may have in a future episode, please also let us know in the comments. And one final thing, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Spotify for all the latest episodes. See you next time.